Hello and welcome to another draft video here. Uh, I'm back. It's the second day of the format. Um, we have the, the very beginnings of the data uh, since 17 lands have started to roll in. Um, and so far it's confirming what everybody sort of already knows. You know, Just Sky, you know, those are the good colors. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, certainly going to try to find to figure stuff out today. I have not been, you know, having like the best format of all time. No trophies yet. Just kind of like a bunch of like four threes, five threes. You know, not nothing bad. You know, it's hemorrhaging gems or anything. But uh, certainly not a great format. Um, generally, day two, day three, when there's like you get that first, like you get just enough sample size on the commons, but um, not quite as much on the, the other stuff. Is when we start to to just see good things happen. So. Kuzil's Flanker is like an interesting rare. It has like a lot of modality. Um, I'm not super excited about this. I think I kind of want to take like Belligerent Yearling. This card's decent. Um, it is four mana. I've been playing a lot of red white, like a lot. I'm gonna try this thing out. You know. Um, I don't know. I, I have a lot of concerns. So. At the end of the day, this is just a three mana three one flash. That, you know, gain two life, scry two is okay. That you're probably like the first mode isn't that good. I think the yearling is probably just better. It's just like a two mana three two, like trample. I haven't found this thing to be like super busted or anything, um, except outside of like red green. I don't think red green is like that great. Honestly, the best card in this pack might be Goblin Tomb Raider, but I'll take this out. I'll take this card. Let's try it out. See how good it is. Um, it's early in the format. Okay, well. And we have this mischievous pup that can go with it. Um, sort of also be like a three mana flash thing. Pretty good. Uh, I found the gem guard to be sort of okay. This pack is interesting. The Screaming Phantom has overperformed, although I don't think black is really a color I want to be in at this stage. Um, yeah, nothing really super interesting here to talk about. Lodestone Needle is playable for sure. I have seen it be good. And. Um, yeah, the back side of this card is kind of a house. There's no denying it. We're just going to take the Mischievous Pup, keep the sort of three mana flash thing, you know, going on here, stay in white. Um, again, I'm still learning, you know, still learning the format. Nothing, uh, nothing set in stone yet. Um, currently, I would say the stuff suggests that blue's the best color. Ooh, wow, so this card is really good. Um, it is four mana, but it's really good common, makes a 1-1. One, one. Eaten by Piranhas has been okay. I wish this card were, like, great. It's it's probably fine in blue-black, but again, I don't really want to start in, like, black cards. Just stay one color here. Not really super complex. Oh, wow. Oh. That's... Geological Appraiser has been basically busted, like, straight up busted for my opponents every time they've cast it. I can actually check its win rate. Hold on. Let me see. I don't know if it has, like, any stats yet. Ah. Again, an uncommon data is not really, like, good at this stage, but... Yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna take this over Ultic Cloud Guard. As good as Ultic Cloud Guard is, um, this card is super busted. And like, I mean, here we are going into red white, but <laughs> I mean, <laughs> this card is just like super cracked. Um, like, what do you want me to do, right? Like, not pick it. Every time this like the, my, one of my opponents in like a dinosaurs deck um, cast two of these in the same game. I did not win that game. I uh, I lost that game by like a lot, <laughs> like a lot. <laughs> Um, the deck is actually currently, like, built sort of around this card. When you have, like, a lot of discover effects, like, you do sort of want to mitigate having, like, a bunch of one-drops. Like, one-drops are good in this. Like, there are a bunch of good one-drops in this set. And even if you hit them off discover, it's not, like, a complete nightmare. But um, think about this. You go Geological Appraiser into Pup into Flash It Back. Infinite value. That's the that's the infinite value line here. Um, but, yeah. Um, solid start. I could have just taken another Cloud Guard and just stayed Mono White, which I think is, is honestly somewhat reasonable. Like, this card is really strong. Um, I don't think it's on the same level. Um, but, it, you know, statistically so far it basically is. Um, I don't know. We'll, we'll see. It, this this card is, like also is very fun. The fun equity is certainly um, higher. I'm going to take this little wonder up. Very good card. Uh, Pit of Offerings, if Descend were like a mechanic that was functional, I think I would take this, but I, I don't think that it is. I'm just going to take a nice little wonder nice up here, nice, nice red wonder up. Um, there's just tons of artifacts. Now, I don't have any artifacts yet. I guess this makes an artifact. But, uh, yeah, I mean, if 
eventually we'll we'll see how stuff plan pans out. Goblin Tomb Raiders have seemed very strong. Uh, Red White has seemed like a strong deck, although I am at the stage where I'm like overdrafting it probably, um, because yeah. So this pack doesn't really have anything I want. Dinotomaton has been pretty unimpressive to be honest with you. Um, I probably am gonna just take it. Screaming Phantom, like that. Uh, Bat Colony isn't very good. I'll take the Dinotomaton. I, I don't really like. I could take the Puzzle Door, but I'm not super like hyped up on that. Okay, I got. I'll take Synapse Necromage. I guess this card's also okay. Nothing in red and white. So this, there's some. There's concerns beginning to be you know created here. I'm gonna make my, but this was like fourth pick, you know. I gotta know. So here I'm gonna take the Wander Glyph because I just need two drops and artifacts, and it does both of those things. Glorifier of Suffering I found to be okay, but nothing special. This card's like really medium, but it does like with the like tap effects, like in red white, it does have the ability to uh, do some stuff in the mid to late game. It's still a little bit awkward because a lot of those effects don't, unless you have the specifically the two drop, which I haven't seen yet in this draft. Um, hmm. So a good start, and then oh wow, interesting decision here. So you have Atali's favor, which sort of leans more into the, like Cascade, Cascade, the Cavern Stomper Wield, which is interesting because it means that nobody wanted it. Um, I'm probably just gonna take one of these red cards. Between Goblin Tomb Raider and Atali's Favor. Well, if I lean into the Discover 3 thing, I think I'm going to take Atali's Favor. This is probably just like straight up wrong, but you can kind of build your deck around Discover 3 a little bit as you do this. Alright. Um, dinosaur Guy or this thing. I'll take this thing. I mean, I'm not playing either of them, but I guess I'll take this guy. Uh. White not super open, interestingly. After the first, you know, like two, two draft picks here. Um, should probably be trying to draft what's open. Again, it is early days, right? It's early days. There's not really any anything set in stone. Nobody knows anything for sure. Sisters 8 again. This trick seems fine so far. Like, it seemed fine. Like, I think you could play it. It's totally okay. Making a treasure is decent. Not a very interesting pack one, not gonna deny it, after the first couple picks. And not seeming like red's, like, super, super open. I don't know. There are, there are certainly concerns about that. Ah, uh, just kind of rounding stuff out. So... I don't feel great. Like, genuinely, I don't feel like this pack one has been, like, the best pack one ever uh, for me. Just because, you know, basically, like, I have this card, which is really good. But other than that, it's kind of a little power light. Oh, okay, just kidding. Now we're just all in. Okay, so this card is really busted. It's like a pirate that is first strike. It's like really strong. Um, other good cards like pirate could wheel. I, th I think I'm probably gonna maybe wheel something here. Pondering pirate, belligerent yearling, vanguard's okay. These two white cards are okay. We're just gonna take the breaches though. Really strong rare. This is interesting. So the rune lurker bat is good. Um, it is kind of bad with my like discover three stuff. But one of these two drops is likely to wheel. There's also Petrify. I don't know how good Petrify is. I can look at its stats. Let me just take a look really quickly. It's pretty good stats. You know what? I'm going to just try taking Petrify here. There's Idol and there's Atali's favor as well. Like Atali's favor has pretty good stats too. So, I don't know. I'm going to just take the Petrify. I haven't actually played with it yet, so I want to see how good it actually is. Ooh. There it is, Sunshot Militia, the king. Um, not, you know, nothing amazing or whatever, but certainly decent. You're, you're gonna hear me like screwing around trying to type stuff in. But uh, yeah, this card is really solid, really solid, gets stuff done. 
Alright, here I am going to take the Rune Lurker Bat. Um, even though it is kind of bad with some of my Cascade stuff. I'm just going to keep calling it Cascade, even though it's not Cascade. Oh, that is that is not what you want to see. <laughs> no cards in your colors, interesting. Um, so the question is what... I mean, what of these cards that I'm not playing am I actually going to like maybe play? Um, I, I don't really know the answer to that. Like, Tithing Blade's okay. Some of these blue cards are decent. Because hypothetically, I could be on, like, not white here. But what is my second color, then, if I'm not playing white? Probably black. I guess I'll take Tithing Blade. It's like a worst-case scenario situation. So here I'm probably just going to take the Sandwing... So it's like okay. Don't love it, but it's like okay. Right, here, Plundering Pirate here. So I don't have tons of pirates for this thing, which you don't really need tons. I mean, I have this, which is good enough by itself. It's just kind of your standard, like, not super exciting red white deck, TBH. Geological appraiser. <sighs> Just kind of waiting around for stuff. It's one of those, this is one of those like awkward situations where it's like that awkward stage of the format where I'm like, I know some stuff, but I don't know enough things. Like it's where I get myself into trouble a lot, where I end up like kind of you know, zoning in on decks like this type of deck where I'm like, oh, I'm just going to draft this deck and it's going to be like, you know, like really good every time and it just isn't always like that good. <laughs> um, and then tomorrow. Tomorrow, generally day two data is sort of when I start to look at like stuff and be like, okay, this is where the commons like actually kind of just are. Like they kind of just commons just are in like a pretty representative position usually. Um, at least, you know, generally speaking. Man, I am just not thrilled about any of this. How do I feel about this thing? I don't really want another Soaring Sandwing, TBH. It's like okay, but I really don't want... I'm not sure I want this. I'll try Glorifier of Suffering. It's an okay, certainly an okay card. Certainly can get stuff done. Uh, when you have, like, things that make treasures. So, which of these two... two which of these two drops is better? Um... It's unclear. I think I'm going to just take the Sunscribe. I don't know. <laughs> Theoretically, I should be, like, taking the red one because I could still technically not play white, but then I'd have to play, like, these black cards, likely, which I don't think I'm super thrilled about. Um, as of right now, I'm basically just, like, never looking at a green card. This this potentially is, like, unwise, but as of the, as of the current moment in, you know, in this format, and pretty much every format, you're just... If you just never look at a green card in, like, any format for the last, like, year, you're, uh, since, like, even all of you on this, like, that, great. You just, you just don't look at the green cards, and then, you know, you, you do pretty well. Um, so, we'll see. I don't know the Deep King, it's fine. It's not nothing special. But, uh, it's certainly playable. Probably gonna end up making my deck here. I like this pirate quite a bit, as I we saw in the blue-red deck. Oh my god, people, no respect for this, the Stomper. How has the Stomper been doing? I guess we can see. It's been okay. Like, I would think the Stomper would be okay. Get that Forest. Okay. Um, so this card isn't even, like, that good, I don't think. It's a 4 mana 4-4 four, four Trample. If a so Red Source, you control the deal. Oh, wait, no, just kidding. I have uh, Sunshot Militia. <laughs> oh, no, wait, this card is actually good. Um... I have a Sunshot Militia. Now I just take every single Sunshot Militia I can get, which I already was going to do anyway. But yeah, no, this card with Sunshot Militia is just unbelievable, because it makes the amount of non-combat damage equal to this thing's power, which is like four, so this thing just hits for four every time now. <laughs> Alright, now now we have to do it. Now we have to... Now I have to get... as I have to achieve the goal of, of getting... of killing somebody with that. Um, this very medium red-white deck that may or may not get there. Um, okay, I actually liked Kinjali's Dawn Runner a decent amount. Um, I think it is probably better than Plundering Pirate here. I don't really think there's anything else. The Hidden Volcano is kind of interesting. 
but I'm going to take this one. The pirate's also very good. I'm just going to take the John the Dawn Runner. I don't have a ton of ways to, like, buff it or whatever, but I do have, like, a Tali's Favor. I feel like these Ancestor's Aids that are pretty good. Um... Interesting. So what do we take here? I think I just want Scythe Claw Raptor. It might just be worse than like a Tully's Favor. I don't know. I mean, I'm just gonna take it and just pretend it's good because it's like a Raptor and does a bunch of stuff. The Torch is okay. More three drops is good though with my Discover three things again. I only have like two of them. So this is this is basically so this is like the worst case scenario for the deck at this point. Uh, sort of how I like to think about this. Torch versus, oh wow, this guy's pretty good. I don't know why, I mean, I guess nobody's drafting black to the right of me. Guidewing's okay, Torch is okay. I guess I'll take Guidewing. How's Torch been doing? Oh, Guidewing's doing a lot better. Let's take the Guidewing. I did like the Guidewing. It does wear a bunch of stuff well. I don't have a ton of two drops. The one thing this deck is missing right now is like two drops. Alright, so what do I cut for the guide wing? Probably, like, I mean, I guess this deals non-combat damage with this, so you know what? It gets to stay. Uh... It's not looking good, boss. It's not looking, I really don't want this. But, I don't really have many other options. Oh boy, oh boy. Um, I don't really want to cut the Sandwing, because like, even though it's bad, I, eh, I'm going to cut it. <laughs> There's two Ancestors' Aids. It's like, kind of concerning that that's in the deck, you know, I'm not really super thrilled about that. I need more Sunshot Militias for this guy. I just, I want them. I don't also don't have that much cheap stuff. The deck's kind of a bit of a disaster. There's really just not a whole lot going on here that I'm super thrilled about. the moment. Um, yeah. So I could take this two drop, or I could take this cave. This two drop has not impressed me in any way, and the cave actually has been pretty decent. I really don't have that many two drops though. Do I even have enough two drops? Ah, you know what? Who needs them? Who needs them? Not me. Surely not me. Um, torch here. Okay. So I'm just taking now, just taking cards in order in the color I'm in. At this stage. Again, these are bad with like the, uh, some of the stuff in my deck, but, um, I don't want this, but I'll take it. White did not seem super open. I probably shouldn't have been drafting white at the end of the day here. Do I want this helping hand? I mean, it gets back like this thing, and this thing, and this thing, and like the Conjoli Dun Runner. Maybe. I definitely don't want the random four drop that doesn't do anything. I'm going to play this Altasaur. Ooh. Tully's Favor. The problem with the Tully's Favor in my deck is that I just don't have that many two mana spell, like two drops, so I don't have like things to put it on. Yeah, I haven't been super impressed with this. I think I'm actually going to cut the other one, too, because it's not very good. Unfortunately, I only got one Sunshot Militia. I only saw one, I think. Maybe I saw another one, and I'm just, like, straight up lying. All right. Um. Okay, what do I want to cut here? Probably cut this Glorifier of Suffering. I don't think I really have the Sacrifice Fodder necessary for it to be good. Idol the Deep King. Is it good in my deck? Maybe just cut an Ancestor's Aid. I don't need two of those. Alright. Send it. I'm not super thrilled about this deck, but we'll uh, we'll see how it goes here. Um, it's gonna be a bit of a bit of a rough ride, you know. But uh, we we can you know we can we can do some cool stuff. Some cool things can be done. I don't have tons of interaction, uh, but we'll we shall see what uh, what transpires. Okay, I have Sunshot Militia in the opening hand, that's good. Um, 
what are we doing here? We're playing a hidden courtyard tapped on one. I have actually found these K-Lands to be better than I expected them to be. I thought they were going to kind of just be, like, awful. They're actually pretty decent. Um, I don't, yeah, no, no, not, not, not super impressed by that, to be honest. Let's go like this, Sunscribe, and then I can go Atali's Favor next turn. Okay, or I can just not do that. So now what am I doing? Being sad. I guess I'm just gonna make a three minute three one flash, probably. <laughs> I don't know. I could just play this guy. Yeah, it's probably better to just play this guy. Cause even though Oh. That's a problem. That is a problem. Well. Yeah, that's that's pretty bad. <laughs> We're just gonna explore, I think. Yes, yeah, so there there were so there were decisions that could have been made differently this game that maybe not have led to there being an adaptive gem jar that's gonna hit me for like eight million every turn now. Um so they could make the tithing blade, they're not gonna they're just, you know, making, they're just doing this. This is what they're doing. I can see it being decent. Compass Gnome, sure. How much damage am I taking? Since it's permanence, right, so I can discover again off of that. Yeah, time to take six. <laughs> it's not great. I think I'm just going to go like this. Then we'll see what happens. Yeah, cast that. Cast. Um. So I think I'm gonna attack first, and then discard the planes. I guess I could discard the Altasaur. I think I would rather discard the planes though. Doesn't really matter so much. Um. Sunshot Militia here, I think I would rather, well, so we could Sunshot Militia tap down the two things. I'm going to take, like, eight damage, but they can't really, like, attack me with the 6-6, six, six, right? Because if they do, I guess, you know what I can do? I can block with the Plundering Pirate and then Mischievous Puppet back. That's probably my best bet, because... They're gonna just like go all in on this gem guard, um, likely. Um, do I just take this back to my hand? Hmm. Oh, it means they get to hit me for a bunch. They also get to scry one. But I get to explore again. I think I, I think it is worth just doing this. Because, yeah, they get to, like, scry one or whatever. But the, the joke is that they can't really... I'm going to just jump here. Don't love it, for the record. I do not love it. Might even say there's nothing I like about it. Maybe I'll just take... You know, I'm just going to take seven. Um, could end up being a bad decision for me, but... I think what we're going to do is play this. Let's see what's up. That's pretty good, actually. Then I can go Sunshot Militia. This turn I want to chump with something, so I think these can get tapped, discard this, draw the river guard, and then pass. Certainly could find myself dead here. 
Certainly could. That's fine. That is fine. Block. And we're gonna go Cloud Guard, presumably. Do I want to attack with the Dawn Runner? Good question. I think I do, yeah, because it trades with the War Scribe, which is probably fine. What do I want to tap down? Probably just. I could even just play this thing. Which is pretty good. I kind of want to just play this guy. It's a big body that, you know, blocks all their stuff. Yeah. I'll just do this. Probably should just not. I think I want to have it like this. I think this is what we're going to do. I don't know. I don't know how much I love that, but we're going to see. So again, this is sort of like weak to removal. Why well, not? Oh, they're gonna destroy my land. Okay, sure. No, not my land. No, no, my thing. I mean, it is bad, but I don't think I was ever gonna be planning on spending mana to like use it. Um, are they gonna kill my Sunshot Militia? Oh, nope, just kidding. Minus one life. Uh, okay, it's a lot of things. This is sort of the problem with the gem guard is that eventually it just becomes like very large, but that doesn't actually really matter very much. Like it being a nine nine here is no different from it being a seven seven. Wow, they didn't even attack. Didn't even get to attack. All right, well let's. I think I I think we've now reached the point where I want to do this, and I'm gonna do this. What is better, the Geological Appraiser or the Ultic Cloud Guard? I think just play the Ultic Cloud Guard here. It's pretty safe. You know, it gives me an extra chump blocker, and like, it gives me two guaranteed bodies, whereas the Ge Ge Geological Appraiser could not, theoretically. Um, I don't feel like I'm in an amazing spot. Like, again, like they just have, I'm kind of, you know, just, just clinging on here. Like the Tithing Blade could get me. Okay, they have their own ultic cloud guard. Can I draw my um my thing? They should probably be I don't know why they didn't attack last turn, genuinely, I have like no idea. But they kinda need to be like making me lose permanents here. Possibly because I could have blocked, I guess. Just chump, I'm not blocking that. And then we're just gonna Altasaur them. They have the blades, they have the blades. Okay, are they dead now? I take two, two damage, three damage, four damage, five damage. Cause it depends on what I hit on the geological appraiser. So I guess we'll do this first. Cast that. Gonna gain two life with scry two. Uh, the torch is good here, I think. Uh, I well, actually, no, they're not dead because of Tinker's Tote. That's the thing to keep in mind. So I can't actually cast both of these. I think I will keep both on top. No, no, I guess I should keep the torch on top then if I'm. Can only cast one of the two things, huh? 
tap this and tap this. It's going to make this. Play the guide wing. Torch. No, I'm going to tap the torch. I'm going to tap this 3 1. And I think that's all I want to tap down. I think we're going to chill. I could trade off cloud guards. I just don't really see like an enormous reason to do that. Like they do have, I could just kill. Oh yeah. And now see, this is what, this is why I didn't do more stuff. Cause I was like, well, they could always have something that's just enormous. So let's figure out the, so the math is for blockers. I'm gonna block like this. I'm probably gonna block like this. Actually, all right, so this block is like free. This is just gonna happen, unfortunately. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, how do I feel? I take three damage. And they lose. Let me think about this. How does it look? Yeah, I think this is as good as we can do, right? We can't really do much better. Take three damage, and they lose all their guys, and I keep my thing that does a bunch of damage. Yep. I will keep it like this. Bonk. Who gets to explore? I guess you get to explore. Uh, they're just off it. Yeah, I think they were just dead on board there, right? Because I take two, four, and then one, two. Yeah, they're just dead. Yeah, so that's why that, like, that five mana, like, four to three guy that I thought was going to be decent going into the set just isn't. It just doesn't get there, because you would, uh, you would think that it would be better, but it just kind of falls a little bit flat. So that game, we just, we just grinded them out. We were just doing, grinding out the uh, the grindy black-white deck. I mean, the, you could see why, like, the, the black artifact for two mana that just draws you a light. Like, it just, it doesn't do much. And you could see also why the big guy's not great. I don't love this, but I am on the play. It's a bunch of three drops. If I do draw a two drop, I mean, I don't have a ton of two drops in my deck. Like, that's just a thing like, is that my deck's going to struggle with. Ooh, we drew our four drop. That's nice. But we can go Dawn Runner on three, and then I don't care about that. That card does not do anything. Um, Dawn Runner. And then this could go in the yard because I don't really want it. I have now have a 2 2. Double Striker, which isn't so bad. Um, do they want to kill it? They can't. So that's nice. Uh, I guess my question is do I want a Tali's favor or do I want to just Geological Appraiser? I think I'm just going to Appraiser. Um, High tempo plays are for high tempo. I guess I could see if they want to block first. They don't want to block. Because I could have idled the Deep King if they blocked, but they did not choose to block. Reasonable. I will definitely cast that. <laughs> and now I have like 8,000 power on board on turn 4 because of the Geological Appraiser. Very good card. Um, it also makes it painful them to cast. Is it spells or abilities? No, it's just spells. So that's kind of annoying, but I can kill it if they tap out, which they have done here. Um, so I think I'm just going to kill it. Uh, alternatively, so I could try to set up like a, so I could, so I can actually already just pop this back and I can also pop back the appraiser. I'm somewhat down to just Atali's favor, my four, three, and then attack. Seems okay, because they just block with the one. Uh, eh, it's not great. I guess I could just attack. Well, the problem is they just block the raptor with the 3 1, right? Yeah, I think I'm just going to try Atali's favoring this 4 3. Yup. Are you a pirate by any chance? You are not a pirate, but we're attacking. So they're just going to lose the vanguard. But this does deal like three damage to their face too, so like that was part of the reason I did it. 
chance that I could still deal three to their face. Okay, I do not care about that at all in any way. They could make it work, but that doesn't. <laughs> Things that don't matter. I guess this does work on gain life. You know, who, who knew? There's text on this card. I didn't know there was text on that card. Like, let's let's be real. Nobody knew there was text on that card. Like, let's let's keep it real. You know. Um. I think I'm just gonna petrify the three three here and then attack with breaches and see what happens. I guess I'm actually yeah. I'm just gonna attack with breaches here. So just pay three life, right? Um, do I want to exile a card that I can play this turn? I have drawn my five drop. I do have some four drops. I think I'm just going to make a treasure token for now. Let's see what they do. They do not choose to do anything, so we're just going to pass then. This is whenever you gain life, not like... Just happens. I'm probably just going to mischievous pup back my Dawn Runner. Hmm. Yeah. Interesting. Oh, they just—they have chosen to attack me. Interesting choice. The question is, do I get back the appraiser? Or do I get back the dawn runner? I think I'm just gonna get back the dawn runner. And then that's probably just good. That's probably all I need. You've made a 4-4, it's true. Uh, let's attack with both of these. Let's see what I want. Do I want to make a treasure or do I want to exile a tough card? Um, I'm pretty down to just make another treasure token. They've chosen to block. Very wise choice. I'm gonna go Dawn Runner here first. See what happens. Oh, really? That's not the card's not so good. If you can't, if your opponent knows it's coming, go play Sunshot Militia and just start pinging them with the treasures here. Do I care about being able to block? Yeah, I kind of care about being able to block. I am at 14. Um, Man, the, Mef the Mephitic Drought is back, and it is once again giving my opponent- Oh no, oh no! <laughs> Minus two life! Minus two life, again! Yeah, so this this card, we're really just seeing why it's just not very good. Um, they could have just print- they could have just made it, uh, what's it called? Ickerwell Spring. Although, I mean, the problem is it's, like, a black card, so they can't just, like, reprint Icar Will Spring, because then it's, it has, like, a, you know, it's a swamp. I don't know. They could have done something different with it. Like, what they could have done, what I might have done is, like, you make it lose one life when it, when it like, enters the battlefield, but then you gain two life when it dies, or when it leaves the, the battlefield. Something like that. I don't know. Like, I don't think it would have made it, like, busted or anything, but it would have incentivized you more to sacrifice it. And, like, sacrifice is a theme already. It's like, you already want to sacrifice it, but just having to pay the extra life, like, the two extra life is kind of bad. It's, like, not very good. Um, these days. It's just, it's just, you know, a too heavy of, hefty of a price to be paying. Um, in the, the modern age, right? All right, uh, keep this hand. It has a one drop on turn one, and it also has an artifact on turn two, which is pretty good. I have this thing. This thing has sort of just been a three mana, three one flash, but sure. You get to scry two, gain two on a three mana, three two, three one flash. It's not bad, right? Like, just make sure you don't draw anything bad in the late game. The uh, the Wanderer looks gonna help with that too here, because I do have an extra land. Four is typically one higher than you need. Oh, okay, all right, one drop. It's on early here. It is on early. So we're just gonna attack. The guide wing's been very good. Like just the having vigilance is really nice. Um and Alright, real question, am I just idle of the Deep King that? I think the answer is probably yes, because then I get to attack for three. I could already attack anyways. 
And then I can just play Plundering Pirate. And I don't really care if they kill my Wandering Lift. Do I have double red card? I do have a double red card, so let's do this. We'll discard a land, because I'm very greedy. Oh, wow. I don't think I want to use that, but I'm happy to just trade, I think. Oh, they didn't want to trade. Intriguing. Well, we're going to play the Plundering, pl the plundering Pirate, then, and just, uh, just get going. Uh, yeah, I think you could idle the Deep King, but I'm like... This is sort of why I didn't, right? Like, if they just don't block, like, it's just great, right? <laughs> like, it's just a, just free damage. It's free. It's free damage. Who wouldn't want free damage? Not me. I want free damage. Um, Might of the Ancestors. Okay, this card, uh, I have played with it. It beat, it beat me one t This is, this is bold. This is very bold for my opponent. All right, let's uh, let's just go here. I'm not super interested in discarding any of these. I do want to hit a land drop, but do I want to hit a land drop that bad? Decline, I think. I don't know what the I don't know what the plan is here. I'm probably idol of the deep kinging their attendance on scribe if they choose to jump here. And the reason is that, um, okay, they're going to go to seven. Uh, interesting. I'm taking five. I, I don't know. There, there should be, I assume there's some reason that this has happened. Uh, but I don't know what it is. You got it, boss. You actually, like, got it. Okay, I'm just gonna gain three, gain two, scry two here probably. Um, the scry two isn't super valuable because I do sort of want lands, but okay, you got it. So we're just gonna do this. Gain two, scry two. Don't really need. Uh, these are both kind of bad for me. The raptor doesn't really do anything, and the land is just sort of not the land that I want. So. Um, now we attack with everything except for the flanker, because they just block. Well, I guess I can just attack with, so. They just block the flanker with the, the explorer guy. I think that's actually fine, though. I don't really want to get rid of any of these. I could even just put the flanker back in my hand. The pop two. That's actually not so bad. Not interested in discarding. Next to blockers. Hypothetically, they could leave themselves dead here too. Like if they do this, for example. They've chosen not to do that. So this is the first thing I'm gonna do. And I think I'm also going to I they take two here. And then they lose their entire board. Take two, lose their entire board. I lose half of my board. I think this is fine, actually. I'll just let this happen, and then maybe I'd hold the Deep King and maybe just Mischievous Pup. I could also just Dawn Runner. I'm probably going to just Dawn Runner, actually. Uh, what if they have the Wrath? There's no need to need a Dawn Runner. Like, I can just pop on, on my end step and then remove a thing, potentially, or, like, hit them for three. Okay. Not doing anything. I'm just going to do this and then not return anything. And then it's now my turn. Attack all. Discard land. Let's draw another land. Yep, this is fine. 
there instant speed life gain in this set? I don't know. So they can kill my 2-2, two, two, that's pretty bad. Oh no, I still get two map tokens. I'm not too mad about that. Just gonna do this. Explore. Make this explore again. Okay, they're at three. They could totally get, there could be a way out for them, I'm sure. Right, well, that's not it. <laughs> that is not the way out. They have not found the way out. That's, that's a nice little clean game there. Nice clean game. Nothing, nothing serious, just, uh, just vibing, just chilling, you know, getting stuff done. Um, in the, uh, the, the, the situation here. All right. Red white deck continues to roll on. There's actually a lot of like three minute instant speed stuff in this deck, which is actually kind of nice because it plays well together in that way. So the deck is currently overperforming my expectations. It's three and zero at the moment, you know, we'll see if that trend can continue, but I've been liking it. You know, I've been liking the cards in it. Uh, it's all little like value engines and stuff. Now, two of my opponents have been black white, a deck that I think might be truly awful, potentially. Um, so there is that. There is that is certainly a thing that that could be the case. The last opponent was red white. Their deck seemed fine, but I was on the play. Basically, <laughs> is what happened. <laughs> basically, I was on the play. What it was, so what happened last game is I was on the play. My opponent was not on the play, and that made it very difficult for them to win. I'm gonna keep this. So I do need to draw lands, but if I draw a land, we're just off to the races. We are just off to the races. The question is, do we play Breaches or do we play Atali's Favor? I think what I'm going to do is, I wonder if they just like straight up would trade with me here. That'd be crazy. That'd be the craziest thing ever. I think I'm just going to play this against blue-white specifically. Maybe I do want to play Atali's Favor. Nah, I'll just play the play the play the good cards. Play the good cards, and then so there's actually like some things with the Sunshine Militia that I'm still not 100% sure if you're how I'm supposed to play them. Like in this situation, am I supposed to tap both of my guys? I don't think so. But like, am I ever really blocking? I am in this case, particular in this particular uh, situation, but. Obviously, I'm attacking with breaches here. Uh, I think I'm just gonna do this and make a treasure token. And play this guy. Then go tap these two down. I don't think I need to tap down my other guys. They're it's like holding back the vanguard. Uh, it's not holding it back, but it like kind of is. Adaptive Gem Guard again. Who cares? Also, who asked? The Gem Guard is actually especially bad in this situation. Like, usually it's, like, okay, but in this particular spot, it's, like, kind of garbage. Because now I can just go Atali's Favor on... So they don't have mana for the Vanguard either, do they? Whew. Atali's Favor on you, I guess? Or do I want it on the... I guess I'll put it on you. Sure, I'll cast that. Do I want to scry one Burt pre combat and then see if I want to exile something? Oh, they're just off it. <laughs> Somewhat reasonable, to be honest. Somewhat reasonable. I think this guy, this guy has had some early hype, but I am. I do think if you're playing, like, the right way in this format, where you're making a bunch of, like, tokens and stuff, and you're just like, going wide, um, it does kind of just get beat by going wide, because you, you kind of, like, it just kind of sits there. It's just kind of a large dude, and you do have to tap all your stuff every turn to make it big. But, uh, yeah, oh wow, I've got the curve out again. I am on the draw at this time, though, which is rigged. It's actually not allowed. I'm not supposed to ever be on the draw. 
Okay, that's nice. Perfect, perfect. Any, any perfects in the chat? So I do not want to... Let's see, they did go mount... Uh-oh, dinosaurs. The dinos are coming. I have lost the dinosaurs. Oh, wait, just kidding. They're, they're ramping. I was scared, and then they started playing ramp cards, and I just you know didn't think about... I was not scared anymore. Although I probably should be a little scared, because they did have the ramp card on turn two, which is when it's actually good, as opposed to not being very good. I think he's a pirate. They can destroy my artifacts and enchantments. And they're chomping my thing. Okay. Um... I think we're just going to go breaches here. Pretty... I could go pirate into breaches. That's actually probably better, right? Because then they're not as incentivized to kill it. Question is, do I want to tap down? Am I ever blocking? I'm probably never blocking, no. I probably should have tapped down my other creature then. I don't think I'm ever blocking here though, because there's just too many things they can have that blow me out on a double block, so I just don't really see a reason to block. So if I'm not blocking, I should just be attacking, and in this case, attacking means this. Do I care about that even? Not especially. Um, I guess I want to make a treasure token. They're never blocking. I guess I'll make a treasure token. The creator of Sun's Creation, I've found, like, in some cases it may do something. I've had to see it do something, though. Do this. Here, here might be the first time I see it do something. I'm just gonna pass here. I don't love it. So let's see if the, let's see the let's see it. I'm ready. I'm ready to get owned. I'm ready. The ownage is about to happen. It's about to take place. So they could blow up my Sunfire Torch. I don't think they're like going to, but it certainly could. No blocks. So if they had discovered, they probably were supposed to do a pre-combat. Okay, so they have this thing. I don't really care about that thing. I could make it not block even. So I'm gonna exile a card that I can cast this turn. Oh, I should have equipped the torch. I don't think it's that. I'm not gonna. I wasn't gonna use the ability, obviously. I probably should have used it. Yeah, actually, that's that's kind of bad. I should have equipped the torch and then sacrificed it to the kill the dig site conservator. Oh! <laughs> Do they know? Oh my god, they don't know. Wait, is this lethal? They... Six, seven, eight, nine, and four is thirteen. I can deal eight damage. Three, six, seven, and eight is fifteen. So I don't need to. We did it. <laughs> we did it, ladies and gentlemen. We got to do the thing. <laughs> I got to do the thing. Uh, oh, baby. We got, I got, I got, well, you know what? See, like, this is, you know, you got to play with the mythics when you draft them because this is the type of stuff you only get to do, like, once or twice in a format. And that confirmed good. Actually confirmed good. Um, you, I confirmed it right here. Did my opponent block ever? No, they just never blocked. So that was maybe, you know, on them. That's why that, I mean, see, this is, this is like that 4 mana 3-3, like, oh, it's gonna win the game, it's gonna win the game. Risky keep here, but I am going to keep it, uh, on the draw. 
Two lander on the draw, always risky. We did draw the third land. Now to draw a two drop. Is it too much to ask? Would it be too much to ask to draw a two drop? Okay, well, you know, I can't complain too much. I can complain a little bit because it's like well within my rights to complain, but so they do have three triple white, which means so they so they pretty much always have their second color then if they topped something. Oh. Sunbird. Oh baby, look at that. Um I'm just gonna play the Dawn Runner here. Yeah, the Idol of the Deep King could deal with Ooh, that's actually kind of interesting. Do I want to keep this on top? It provides me with more flexibility next turn. Because I could go Atali's it plus idol. Oh, I did, I've, just, I've, I've just kept it. I've kept it on top. <laughs> I definitely didn't like mean to do that. I wasn't like 100% committed. So they're playing red, white. I'm just going to kill my thing. Sure. So this becoming the other thing is pretty bad for me. I think I'm just gonna idle the Deep King that. No, I'm not. <laughs> I was going to do that. Now I think I'm just gonna Geological Appraiser. Potentially. Let's see what it hits. Eh, not the best, but we'll keep we'll take it. So they can start making things with the envoy here. I do have concerns about my stuff just like dying. I do like have to block, huh? They can't craft right now. This is like the weirdest like text box ever. And I am gonna block the the three three. I think could be stupid, but it is what I'm going to do. So what does it play? What is playing? What is blocking the four two play around? Nothing really because I have the idol in hand. Yeah. Basically just terrible. That, however, is also terrible. Well, I don't really have a good answer to that, so I might just die. So I can just tap two artifacts. I guess like my answer to it is that I can block. Doesn't seem like a great answer. I'm gonna do this plus this. It's not great. It's not. It really isn't very good. But we're <laughs> we're uh, you know, it's a tough tough situation. Let's see it. Oh, they get to scry too. If they scry top, I'm like super dead. Okay, I'm not just like dead on the spot. That's nice. They can't cast any red spells. They have a braid. I am now dead. I have died. I've become killed. I kill my pirate and I can't block the sunborn anymore. I guess I could just chump it. I'm not really going to chump it, though. I'm going to just block with the Tomb Raider. I mean, if if they do something other than killing the pirate, I, I'm just, like, super dead, right? Because then that means they have something better to do. Okay. Well, I'm not just immediately dead, but... Still don't feel great. Has to be a white combat trick. I mean... You know, I mean, there's maybe... Is there hope? Is there copium? Hopium, you know, all that stuff? Is there any copium left? How bad is Atali's favor? Well, it's really bad. Might as well cast that. Unfortunately, we it's not enough to, uh, you know, do the thing. I mean, I am just dead, huh? Alright, well, run it back. Run the slot machine back. <laughs> um, I guess I'd rather cast this. 
I should equip the torch, huh? Because then I can block, actually, theoretically. Declining. So now I have enough... I do have enough power and toughness to block. Oh, they just can kill my thing. Okay, they got me. <laughs> Tough game. Gonna have games like that. Where your opponent just, you know... Just get you. You just get got. Sometimes you just get got. So that's life. <laughs> so yeah, I mean again, that was the big big example of like the play versus draw. I think this is actually going to be a uh, pretty heavy play versus draw format perhaps. Some people may call it. A lot of people aren't going to like that. It is I just sort of see it as like being, you know, it is what it is, right? You can't really do a whole lot about it. You get to play the game, right? I am in love with this hand though. A lot of cheap stuff. Okay, we're just going to ah. Ooh. I think I want to play my own guide wing first? Or do I want to play the lifelinker first? I think I want to play my own guide wing first. I do have to not block if they... Ah. Oh, I'm thrilled then. Okay, let's just do that. Yep. Deal. <laughs> I will take that every day. So this is interesting. I think I'm going to play Ruin Lurker Bat plus Sunfire Torch. The reason to do this is that it sets up the torch for next turn, and it sets up a descend trigger for this, potentially, if I want that. Turns out I don't want that, but... Um, I think we're just going to Sunshot Militia. Play this thing. And do I care about my life total, or do I care more about their life total? I care more about their life total, so I'm going to deal a little one damage here. They're playing blue white. If they're playing like red, red white, I think I would probably leave it back, but because they're playing blue white. Also, there's this too. I didn't think about that, but yeah, the explore trigger makes it much worse as well. That's a good one. So they do have that. Uh, there is stuff that can blow me out here, so I think I'm just going to play breaches. We're going to just attack here, see what happens. See what's in the box. Nothing in the box. We'll just go breaches and we're going to tap, I think, to deal one damage, likely. Um, just because I really do not care about my life total against blue-white. It's just not. So they may have the... Oh, they have the island cycler. Is, this, is it good to be cycling that? I guess it's seven mana. So there is that. Also, the tapping stuff down may make them think, like, oh, I have to, you know, whatever. So I'm not worried about that in really any way at all. I guess I could petrify the guide mural. I guess I could do that next turn. I want to make a treasure token this turn. I could put this on the thing. So what do I want to do? I want to be able to Ancestor's Aid down the 4-4 potentially, and then I can make a treasure token, and then I can also play the Sunscribe. So let's do that. Let's make a treasure token. If they block, great. Sunscribe. Don't really want any more lands, TBH. Just continue to tap stuff down. I have Petrify too. So next turn, what I'm probably going to do is Petrify the Master's Guide Mural because I can't flip it this turn. Oh, well, now they can't flip it. Oh, no. Oh, no. It's a nightmare. They missed. They missed. Now I don't have to Petrify at all. Oh, so there's a Petrify for them. So I probably don't want to put this on the uh, breaches, huh? So now I don't need to petrify this because it didn't... So I can do this, and then I can't play it anything necessarily. I don't really want to make it so that stuff can't block. Just go plundering pirate, I think. Do I want to equip the torch? Probably, yeah. Uh... Treasure 
token decline. They're gonna petrify my breaches probably. Let's do this. Pirates. Square one. I don't hate that, but I don't love it either. It's probably a little late in the game. And then we're just gonna keep banging. So this was an example of like why I was talking about like earlier, like, oh the Sunshot Militia, should I just be activating it more aggressively? And the answer in this case was like, yeah, but I mean as you can see, like they they now have spent their mana to, to remove the the Sunshot Militia. Oh it's gonna stay on top. Is it gonna be enough? Um, presumably no. I think they're just dead. I believe they are just dead here. His face. Can't block. Treasure token. Take action. Let's just go his face. There we go. All right. Excellent work, excellent maneuvering. And yes, yeah, so that's that's an example of why like Sunshot Mos is a very interesting card and a very good card. Um You basically get to like on on like turn four, I was like, do I care about my life total against blue white? And then I was like, no, I really just don't care at all. So I just started tapping stuff down really aggressively. And then once you start doing that, you can keep doing it because they just can't really attack you because if they attack you, they just die. So it really puts your opponents in a tough spot. Um, I do think there has been maybe like, so the, the early, the early stats don't have anything, have it anything like super busted or anything. And I kind of agree that it's not like, like the best card ever, but we'll see as the format goes on, um, whether or not the cards can, uh, good. It's obviously good. I think we've I think we've come to the conclusion that the card is obviously good. I don't love this hand, but I am going to keep it. This card's impressed me. Uh, three mana, two two double strike has just been. Oh, so they have the cog, the cog man, cog man. They honestly might just be supposed to play it. Another blue white deck. I am just going to play the dawn runner here. Good to get your explore payoffs off early. Draw a card. Not so bad. Um, it is bad against the cog work guy, but do I care? I mean, it just depends if they want to hold up one mana for the whole game or not. If they do, what does that mean? I can play this Altasaur, that's pretty nice. Oh, that's kind of annoying. Well, I'm just gonna do this then. Don't love that there is a minecart in play because the minecart is very good. I could even just block it. It's kind of the worst. It's kind of the worst. And now I can't just block it. <laughs> Not a whole lot to do then. I guess we're just gonna be dealing with this the old fashioned way by doing nothing. So I could petrify that. I don't, I don't love it. I'm just gonna play the Altasaur. It, could go very poorly if I do this. However, the Altasaur is very large. Um, I'm not gonna attack, obviously, because they have the one drop. Um, they just block, so they, you know, I can't really do that. I could have played the Idol of the Deep King instead of the Altasaur, and then also the Plundering Pirate if I was doing that. That seems like okay, but I don't know. Not super in love with my spot here. Yeah, the Wailing Pirates is kind of just good. You have played a 3 2 that draws a card. Congratulations. Um, I think it's time to just start smashing with the uh, Cloud Guard here, and then we're just going to play Pirate and Pass, I think. And now I don't actually feel so bad, because the Altasaur is going to start dealing two a turn. I have this Idol of the Deep King as well. Petrify helps, helps as well. They could have, well, they probably don't have the Wrath. I mean, they could. Do I care about that? 
I mean, yes, but not immediately. Because I'm killing it, huh? Can't do anything about it now. I guess I could just petrify it and kill the uh, kill the Waterwind Scout and then petrify the Abdullah. That's probably good. Deals a lot of damage to their face. Let's do them. I'm always like concerned that I'm not gonna auto pay this somehow. Like I'm always just concerned that that's gonna happen. Um, let's craft this with the treasure token and make a thing that allows me to go on a cloud guard. I think so. They have the they, again. They still think they have the one two. So as a result of that, I'm just gonna put this on the cloud guard and start smashing. I think. They may even, oh, they're just not, they're just holding the 1-2 till death do us part here. They're just all in on the 1-2 here. Um, we'll see. They do need flying blockers. Uh, they could certainly get them. Did find one, yep, okay. Certainly acceptable. They actually have built a decent Abulo deck. I, I think I underrated Abulo in my set review. Because I was like, ah, oh, it's freaking 3-mana blink on a 3-mana three 3-2 three flyer. And we did just see why 3-mana three 3-2 three flyers aren't very good, and it's because I just was able to um, blow it up with the not-so-great removal spell. Wailing Pirates is very bad for me. Not super excited about that. Do this. It's going to slow me down quite a bit. Um, so this is interesting. What do I use this pup on? It's not so great to use it on anything right now, I don't think. I don't really want to trade flyers because there's not really a point. Um, Cogwork guy is still preventing me from attacking with my double striker. Altasaur already has stuff on it. Hmm. I think I'm just gonna chill for now. It's a, it's a stun counter, so they just I just doesn't untap for one step. I think that's actually fine. It's gonna tap down this, obviously. I'm gonna tap it to deal two to them. It's only one stun counter, right? Yeah. So I think I'm just gonna leave it tapped for now, at least. I think I'm probably gonna get back my ult at Cloud Guard. So again, they still have that one too. I like kind of know they have it. Does it hit any permanent? It does. It hits my. Uh, uh, it hits my. It hits my thing that can deal two damage. So I actually kind of want to just wait on this. Then. I mean, yeah. I mean, at this point, does it does taking three really matter? I mean, I guess they got a one two here. I'm gonna let them use their one two if they want. They are gonna use it. Okay. I don't think I want to bring this back. I'm just gonna bring back my. 
my sovereigns, whatever, whenever I can get it back. But I don't want to do it, like, immediately. I want to wait. Oh, this gives trample, doesn't it? <laughs> well, that's not bad. Okay, <laughs> and there we have it. And there we have it. Trample, trample is good and limited. Be advised. Oh, and that's uh, that's the end of the that's the end of the recording. That's the end of the deck. We trophied. It's first trophy of the season for me. I haven't trophied yet, so that's great. Uh, red, white, getting it done. Already getting twenty gems. Look at that huge Kyrian beast caller. Big, big gems. So uh, this is the deck that got it done. We did get to pull off the Osier, whatever Osier plus Sunshot combo one time, which is all that I asked was all that I asked and we accomplished it. We didn't play these Dine Automatons because they've been really bad for me and I don't like them. Um, let's let's talk about what was good in this deck. Uh, just like having a high density of three drops was really nice. Uh, the Idol of the Deep King was actually like decent. I don't know. I'm still like up in the air about whether or not that's actually good. This card was obviously really good. Um, I don't know. Just like a solid deck. Petrify. Still not 100% sure where, how I feel about Petrify. Uh, it seemed okay. I never really had, like, I never had it where I was like, oh, I'm using this and it's, like, actually good, but I never needed to use it, also. The Besidious Pup was great. This card was sort of just, like, whatever. This card, Breed just continues to just be, like, super thumbs up. This card's really good. Um, and yeah, so, that's the deck. Uh, thank you for watching, and, uh, I'll see you next time.